my goodness. I drove by the house and these two yahoos saw me. Jimma, stop. You're going to get hurt. You shouldn't have jumped off. Look at this. The day we're pulling traps, we go two for two. Jimma, no. Jimma, no. Well, what's up, guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead, and uh, welcome back to another dreary, drizzly, halfway rainy day in southern Oklahoma. Um, you guys know I've been battling a little sickness the last several days. It's, uh, well, it's been dragging on for a while. We're not going to say, we're not going to call any names, we're not going by any C letters or anything like that. Uh, there were no official tests done by the doctor, but sick is an understatement. I feel like I'm over the hump and getting better. Does that mean I'm over the hump and going down? I feel like I'm, I'm over the hump and getting better. Still don't feel great. I can get out and do some things and work for a while and have to go in and take a break and just rest for a while. But that doesn't mean the show stops and the farm work quits and some days you just got to get up and go and do. And today's one of those days. I've got a lot that needs to be done because it has been... You know, weather-wise, it's, it's not cold. We're not getting down below freezing right now. But it has been raining and misty and drizzly. And with all the moisture, everything is a muddy mess. Like, a muddy mess. And the animals need fresh hay. Both pastures are just about completely out of hay. Problem is, is my hay forks are on a machine on the I think they're on the skid steer, not the tractor actually, but my skid steer and my tractor are both at the Mill Creek property, which is a whole nother story because you guys know we uh, let Dusty borrow the tractor to go over there and pick up all the hay and move hay. Well, they might have got stuck and they might have had to come here and get my skid steer to go get the truck and trailer unstuck. But I'm not going to go into great detail about that because that's Dusty's story if he wants to tell it. But my hay fork is over there. And I need to go over there and, and get that so I can move some hay around here. Uh, the other day, I told you guys that we rescued an owl. You remember that? Uh, I'm sure everybody's waiting to hear back of an, for an update on the owl. I don't have a lot of updates other than it's still alive. And that's, that's a positive thing because it was in pretty bad shape. Yeah, I know, guys. You still got hay. I gave you alfalfa yesterday. I gave you feed yesterday evening. It's still early today. I promise you, we'll get you taken care of today. Charlie, do you think you're a donkey? You just trying to blend in with the donkeys? What are you doing up there? I thought I heard your voice from up high. So, the owl situation, our owl friend, I know you guys are, you, look, I, you're so interested in how the owl's doing. I, I don't have any video updates to show you guys other than the owl is alive, Bree. I know that means a lot to you. You guys are muddy and just dirty looking, you know that? Spring will be here soon, things will green up, and we won't just be in a muddy mess, hopefully. Anyways, I, when I was videoing the other day, I told you I also had a, uh, uh, a new diesel tank and a pump to get installed in my in the back of my truck because I've been using this 50 gallon portable diesel tank for a while so I bought this this fill right it's just a hand pump and a little 50 gallon diesel tank a couple years ago and I've been using it it was just staying <laughs> in the shop that was where its home has been but the last several months since we've got two TYM tractors and a skid steer that are all diesel and they're back and forth between here and the mill creek property and <clears throat> wherever i'm you know my neighbors wherever i might be working at the time it's just lived in the back of my truck for the last three or four or five months every time i take it out within you know the next week i put it right back in so i just kind of left it in the back of my truck and there's probably a safer option than leaving a just a portable diesel tank in the back of my truck all the time and it's 50 gallons 50 gallons, like I told you guys the other day, is not big enough for all the machines, all the diesel use that I have right now. I can't even fill everything up with that 50 gallon tank. I didn't mind the hand pump. The hand pump was fine. It's a little bit slow, but 50 gallons wasn't big enough. So recently, a, a sales rep from Philright. Philright is the pump company. 
reached out to me and he was a fan of the channel and he was like hey when you built that you should have just hollered at us we'd have hooked you up and got you a real good pump or something i was like listen i just bought it i just needed it wasn't trying to uh get a sponsor or anything he said well looks like you need to upgrade let's get you a diesel tank to permanently install safely in the bed of your truck that's a lot bigger and we'll get you a 12 volt pump and put on top of it and see how you like it and let us know so you know i showed you guys that the other day in my shop well look at here we now have a 90 gallon titan tank installed with a 12 volt fill right pump on here still empty but 90 gallons of diesel in the bed of my truck is is going to be very handy and so the reason i opted for the l-shaped tank is so i wouldn't lose my toolbox now obviously it takes up a little bit more bed space but uh, i don't have a, a gooseneck ball or a fifth wheel plate or anything but if there was still we would still have room for a gooseneck hitch if we decide to put one in here but that tank like i said is l-shaped and it swoops underneath my toolbox and will hold 90 gallons of fuel so this thing is super nice i can lock it so let me take the nozzle off this is a diesel hand pump just like i mean a, a diesel nozzle just like at the uh, fuel station but i can run a lock through this and lock it up so that you know once if i'm not at my vehicle somebody can't just come by and flip it on and steal all my diesel so i do need to get a lock for that we've got a filter on here everything is all wired in good to go uh so this is like a two-part partnership fill right is the pump company and hang on let me get up there it's kind of starting to rain on me so i may have to uh take a rain check take a break for just a second and come back out and finish this if it starts pouring down on me so this is a, a brand new model of pump that fill right just released and it's their fr8 series 12 volt eight gallon per minute pump and then like i said titan titan tanks this these are typically usually when you see one of these in the back of somebody's truck uh it does have a lockable fuel cap by the way usually you see one it's aluminum or steel and this one's plastic it's a uh, it's it's a little bit different than aluminum or steel so it's not going to get as much condensation the the steel ones will rust on the inside and you end up getting rust in your fuel it's all secured to the bed it's baffled so as you're moving down the road it's sloshing around it's not going to slosh to one side and back it has baffles in there so it's a it's a very safe way to transport diesel this is not um hardwired or hardlined into the fuel tank in my pickup truck because this is going to be for off-road diesel only it's a a dyed a red dyed diesel that i can't run in this truck because this is used on the highway this is off-road or or farm diesel so titan tanks has a lot of different options um, i've piddled around on their website and looked there's one that's not l-shaped that would leave you a lot more bed space if you need more bed space um, they also make fuel tanks where you can add on and replace the fuel tank under under your truck and have extra fuel built in so that it doesn't even take up space in the bed of your pickup truck and it's starting to rain on me so i'm going to go in for just a minute see if the rain will quit i do have to check all of houston's traps this morning he's at school i'm planning on pulling traps today it's just been a rainy muddy mess and i can't imagine we're probably going to we hadn't caught anything since really before the cold front other than maybe one raccoon we hadn't caught a coyote in a couple weeks so anyways it slacks up i'll pick back up in just a minute well caught a little break in rain it's still coming down i have a feeling it's just going to do this off and on throughout the rest of the day <sighs> but the show must go on work must continue all right so huge thank you to uh phil wright and titan tanks for letting me uh test out a setup like this that's really gonna make a big difference on the farm for us and phil wright and titan both are made in the usa products that pump right there is cast iron construction it's got a steel fill pipe in it not plastic this thing should last forever and phil wright is the number one brand in my opinion when it comes to these type of pumps so it's all set up good to go man it's got an automatic fill nozzle you know it's going to shut off it's not going to overflow when you're pumping diesel it's going to do just like what they do at the gas station and as i was saying about that tank that titan tank it's not plastic it's like a military grade polymer made in the usa lifetime warranty it's baffled i mean it's 
like Titan's slogan is, it's the last tank you'll ever need. It's not gonna rust out, it's not gonna wear out. It's gonna last. So, I don't know how long I'm gonna last in the rain, but uh, I've gotta go check all the Houston straps, pull traps, do all that stuff, like I said. And uh, I'm gonna go fill this thing up, head over to Mill Creek, get my haste bike, and probably be doing chores in the rain all day today. Ducks. Well, rain or shine, traps have still got to be checked. No matter whether you're healthy, sick, cold, hot, tired, want to go, don't want to go, raining, still got to check traps, right? And uh, <clears throat> it's it's 9.34 in the morning. Houston's not with me. He's at school. But he's got a coyote and a trap. Same trap, coyote number four. This is five total. This is the fourth coyote we've caught in this same trap. And it has been raining off and on all morning. And uh, this was a muddy, nasty set that I was going to pull today and just not even have a trap here come to check it this morning look who we got we got a muddy coyote and he <laughs> has been uh making a mess of this set for uh several hours looks like we probably caught him early last night or something but he has gone around and around and made a mud hole and this was a nasty muddy set but like i said this is the fourth coyote we've caught in this same spot i'm gonna I'm going to take care of him, get him put down. I'm going to pull that trap out of here completely. We'll probably make a, another set on one side or the other in the next day or two. Because how do you not? I mean, we've this spot has produced four coyotes now. So, he is, uh, he looks tired. And we're going to get him taken care of. Put him out of his, his uh, fear of me here. What a soupy mess. Ugh. So I got that coyote put down, pulled up Houston's middle set along this fence line. And if you guys remember when we set all of these, that, well, we had that one set and it had caught several coyotes. So we decided to come back and set a couple more no activity at all and then we've gone through these this arctic blast and had the deep freeze and the ground froze and now it's been raining off and on for days so you can see the the trap beds a lot of them are a soupy mess and i was gonna pull well i am pulling traps today uh even though houston's not here i'm gonna pull a bunch of these traps clean them up and we're gonna get everything ready to move over to mill creek so checking everything out and this set right here remember we put a, a, a t-bone set in right here just along the road edge Somebody's messing with me. And we might have caught him. It might be the coyote that we caught last night, actually. I just wish, it's just, it's tough. I wish Houston was here. Um, there's so many things that, that he can learn from seeing all this stuff. And uh, a lot of days he's in school. And it's just the reality of it. I hate that he's putting in the work to catch these coyotes and then he's not here. He will be out of school. We could, I could wait until, you know, 4.30 today to run this trap line for him, but it's supposed to rain this evening. And I don't like leaving animals sitting in these traps any longer than I have to. So he's in school and he's missing out, but check this out. So this is that T-bone set. There's the bone and our bait and everything. Our trap bed is right here, okay? Do you notice anything near the trap bed? That's coyote scat, coyote poop. I, he's messing with me. 
he's messing with me is what it is maybe that's the coyote we caught um, but i will say this this right here i know it's gross but listen i'm going to save this this is valuable because i'll i'll save this put it in a bag we'll take it to the mill creek property put it out there and that will be a huge red flag to any coyote on that property so anyways and foothold traps everybody's worried about them I'm gonna set this trap off with my hand right here real quick. This is a, a live trap that's been set. Now, I don't know exactly where that pan, it should be right, right in here somewhere. So if I'm a coyote, which this thing is buried in mud now, it used to be a lot better set than that. So let's just say we're a coyote coming along and we step in this thing. It got me, oh, oh, it got me. It's not that bad guys, okay. But I am gonna save that. Now I've gotta get myself out of the trap. <laughs> So, no damage to my hands. My hands are just fine. Uh, there's a little red mark on the back of that finger right there where it snapped on my hand. It's not that bad. Uh, so I don't know, did we miss a coyote there last night or did we just catch him in the next set along the line? And uh, that proves that it's beneficial to set out, you know, more than one set in an area. If it's good enough for one coyote, it might be good enough for two. So, I'm a, work my way on down the line get all these traps pulled and then we'll get them washed up and we're gonna dip them and get them prepped and ready to go on the next property oh my goodness I drove by the house and these two yahoos saw me Jimma stop you're gonna get hurt you shouldn't have jumped off look at this the day we're pulling traps we go two for two Jimma no Gemma, no. And I gotta catch that dog, guys. Hang on. She ain't supposed to be here. I stopped by the house and she jumped on. You get on. Earl, load up. Get on the buggy. Load up. Get on the buggy. So, two coyotes in one day. First coyote in this set. Earl, I said get on the buggy. Y'all aren't even supposed to be here. Mom let them outside. And when I drove by, they took off after me. Stay. Two for two. What do you think about that? Man, I feel so bad that Houston's not here. Uh, this this little set here we made a couple weeks back. This has been this has been setting for a couple weeks. Earl, I said get on the buggy. Go. Go. You two need to learn to listen. Stay. Anyways, we made this set a couple weeks ago with some raccoon scat. There was some raccoon poop on the ground and uh i knew with this being an intersection there's a mowed road here it goes all the way down there and then ties into this road and these intersections are perfect travel corridors for coyotes and fox and bobcat any kind of predator but uh pretty little dog not not a big coyote probably a female but a pretty one all right i'm gonna get it taken down get it taken care of and uh reduce the risk of one of my silly dogs getting hurt and now i kind of feel really bad for checking traps without houston uh, we I, I just like I said earlier i don't like waiting until last thing in the day and actually today is friday and emily has a, a basketball game this evening so we'll have to pick up houston from school and head straight off to basketball this evening and it just wouldn't work for Houston running traps today. I totally forgot about that. That's a whole nother reason why he couldn't have checked today. And our best uh, coyote day so far, Earl, Gemma, you get on the buggy. Load up. Go. Load up. Our best coyote day ever. And uh, Houston didn't even get to be here today. It's a bummer. Well, look at this. We just pulled up to the set where we caught the mangy coyote a while back here on my neighbor's place. And went ahead and pulled that trap. And uh, look what I almost stepped in here. <laughs> More coyote scat. So we're in the area, we're in the right spots. We're doing things right. Earl smells something here. I am gonna pull all these and, and redo them. We may leave a few here and trap at Mill Creek. Cause we're getting that's just too much good coyote sign and 
I know this is gross and some of you aren't going to like it, but that right there is good bait for another set. Don't tell mom I use one of her kitchen bowls though. See, there's a difference. Off-road diesel, on-road diesel. This is what I have to use when you run in your pickup. This, you cannot run in your pickup. It's dyed red. And uh, tax included, $3.06 versus $3.19. So a little bit cheaper. Sometimes it's a bigger gap, but we're gonna go ahead and fill the old Titan tank up. I don't know. Oh, I guess I better get my key. I'm gonna have to unlock it. This is gonna sting a little bit, but it'll last a long time. Now, <clears throat> I'm not here to sell you a, a diesel tank or a pump or whatever, but I will say this. Feel right obviously is like the industry standard when it comes to these auxiliary pumps. Titan, this is the first time I've ever seen a Titan tank, used a Titan tank, but from everything I've read and they're made in USA product, I think that, that polymer plastic type material is gonna hold up and do a, a, a long life of service in the bed of my pickup vibrating around versus a steel tank so anyways let's see what it takes to fill this thing up how much it's going to set me back and then i'm going to head on up and get the hay ring probably top off the skid steer while i'm there because i'm going to leave it there i've got a lot of work that needs to be done if it ever dries out again and uh yeah on to the next thing i guess Well, it is a 90 gallon tank, but I don't think it's gonna quite hold 90 gallons because I'm not sitting on level ground. So 242, I'm sorry, 250, 50. We'll go with that. Such a lovely looking day, isn't it? Man, I hate to complain about rain. So I don't complain about rain. We haven't seen the sun in four or five days. It's kind of like this sickness just keeps lingering around. So does the cloud cover. I can't wait to see the sunshine. But uh, I'm trying to get over here, do as little as I have to do to get what I need done. So I don't have to get off the road and get stuck. But if I do, I have a tractor and a skid steer here, so there's that. But anyways, I was thinking about something. You know, one extra bonus of having 80, 90, whatever gallons of diesel fuel back there. Diesel weighs like 6.9 gallon, 6.9 pounds per gallon with 80, 80 to 90 gallons. You're looking at about 600 extra pounds, right? 550 pounds, something like that. I'm just doing the math in my head, just making this up. So what a lot of folks will do in a pickup truck when the weather gets bad and we start having icy roads like we did last week is they'll take a like a round bale of hay or something really heavy and load in the back of their truck so that their rear end stays planted on the ground. Well, this just added 550-ish pounds, 600 pounds to uh, the back of my pickup truck. So maybe that's an added perk, added bonus. I don't know. I don't see any ducks on the pond, but I think there's some geese maybe those are ducks from here they look like geese until i zoomed in on them there's a few ducks on the pond i guess everything's melted off in the area so now we don't have you know a hundred ducks on the pond or at least not today anyways found what i needed right there While we're here we'll go ahead and top off the 
skid steer on diesel just to say we did since we got a new toy we might as well use it right i mean that's what guys do Got more than enough hose to reach a long ways. Here we go. Diesel coming out. Like I said, this pump will do uh, eight gallons a minute, I believe, which is a lot more than my hand pump did. Yes, I did have to stand my hay forks up because I did lose a considerable, considerable amount of bed space. There's no denying that. But I feel like this is more important than the bed space. If I need a bigger bed or something, if I got lumber, I can stack a few two-by-fours in beside it or just use a little trailer or my wife's pickup truck. I think Dusty topped off the tractor when he was using it last. He told me he did. Yep. We're full there, so no need to top that one off. This thing should take just a couple minutes to fill up. And, oh, there it went. Just kicked off, just like your standard pump at the gas station would do. That's all there is to it. Just like a gas station on the go, folks. Good to go. We got the new fancy pump and all that fuel why not fill her up mm. huh. 50 times better than toting around five gallon diesel cans and at least five ten times better than my hand pump i'll take it this old piece of a round bell out and then set the new one in there's a uh, not a lot left on this one but I was able to just kind of pick it up and scoop it so set it down out here it's kind of nasty 
and they can do what they want to with it. I may scatter it about a little bit. Phoebe, watch out! Move, Phoebe! Come on now. Look at these girls. <laughs> They're like, oh man, a new bale of hay. Guys, that's that's the old crusty one. I mean, you're more than welcome to pick through it and get what you want, but give me about two minutes and I'll have you a good fresh one in here. Everybody likes a freshie, huh? girls enjoy I'm go get one for the goats because they're out of hay as well hey uh, ladies excuse me I'm gonna have to uh, squeeze in right here get you a new bale of hay set up Okay. Does anyone care, Bear? Clearly not. Nobody cares but you. Bear cares a lot of cares, don't you? Excuse me, pardon me, coming through. Watch out. Ducks, turkeys, goats, I don't care. Pigs, chickens. Out of the way. Two fresh round bells of hay put out. One for the donkeys in their barn, one for the goats up here in their barn. And the uh, copper is definitely enjoying trying to get some of his manly scent on this round bell for some reason. The funny thing is though, you watch Dusty at Cross Timbers Bison, Dunbar and Big Joe do the same thing. When Dusty puts out a round bell of hay, those big bull, those big bull bison will go around and they'll flip it and roll it and turn it and move it copper i mean 200 250 pound goat <laughs> he can't do the damage that a 2000 pound bison can do but he thinks he can he thinks he's tough so i think uh i'm gonna take a break for a little while steve is not taking a break i don't know what the deal is with fancy i don't think fancy is pregnant we've talked about fancy for a long time about having her growing belly as long as she's been here and she was supposed to be bred when she when we first got her you know what two years ago now something like that and as long as she's been with steve he still keeps trying to breed her and uh we don't know we don't know a lot of history on fancy that's the thing she looks pregnant but she's looked pregnant for a long time so i don't know but i'm gonna go in and take a break i know it's not raining right now i should probably go ahead and feed but with everybody having a fresh bale of hay, I'm not going to feed a lot of grain today. Um, I don't. I try not to feed grain to them every single day. They've got hay. I feed uh, alfalfa, a couple flakes of alfalfa to everybody about three times a week. And they've got molasses uh, protein tubs. I'll show you the goat's little molasses slick tub in here. So this is just an, an extra supplement that we use in the wintertime. It's a molasses based. It's got some grain in it and stuff, but a lot of uh, vitamins and minerals and things. I've talked about those things several times in the past, but it's extra protein because we know we're not growing top quality. Number one, um, hay here. It's just grass hay, just native grass hay. So it, it's a good supplemental hay, but it's not something that 
is the only food source they need. Copper, you just think you're tough, don't you? Well, push it. Come on. Give it a push. Turn that thing. Copper, why don't you just push that bale around, buddy? You think you're tough and big and strong. Give it a good push. Flip it over. I'll call you Big Joe if you do, buddy. No, I didn't think so. Well, we'll let them do their thing. I need to, uh, I'm not going to do it today, but pretty soon I need to separate Copper and Old Man Winter over here, Isaac, and probably put them in with Steve and get Fancy out of there, put her in with the rest of the girls, um, just so that we don't have breeding bucks in here when we start kidding. Not that I think Copper's going to hurt anything, but after those does start kidding, they will cycle pretty soon within a few weeks sometimes. Not always, and not all of them, but some will cycle, and we don't want them rebred back that quick. So, Bear, I love you, buddy. You're a good dog. You know that? You're probably the most loyal dog I've ever known. Yep. You're a good boy. Everybody loves Bear, huh? So, I think that's going to wrap it up for today, Bear. I'm tired. Once again, don't forget, guys, if you're in the market and, or looking or searching or thinking about any type of uh, auxiliary fuel tank or auxiliary pump, be sure to check out Phil Wright and Titan Tanks. I'll leave a link to their websites. They're independent, separately um, websites. They're not one business. But I'll leave links to both their websites and description box down below. Not necessarily. It didn't have to be a tank that's permanently mounted in your vehicle you know they a lot of farms have big diesel fuel tanks that are set up stationary on their property and the uh, fuel company comes in ever so you know ever so often and tops it off and fills it up we have no use for a two three four five hundred gallon tank like that at least not yet um i don't know that we ever really will use that much diesel fuel but having this in the bed of my pickup is something that i've thought about and pondered on for a very long time and i'm very proud to have that so huge thank you to uh the folks over at phil right and titan tanks for hooking us up and we will be using that thing a lot in the future so starting to rain again i'm gonna go in rest because i'm still a little bit sick and uh this stuff just wears you smooth out but you guys know when you live on a farm farm chores don't stop work still has to continue things have to be done so anyways guys remember do something today to make somebody smile because you never know it just might change the world so guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next video mm -hmm.